Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Sinusoid Cables, the toughest cable in existence. Snake oil, it's got all of it. It's full to the brim of snake oil. Are you tough enough for sinusoid? You ain't, so don't even bother trying. Sinusoid Cables, only for tough boys. Sinusoid.com Hey, this is Ryan. And this is Steve, and you're listening to 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. Yay, we're back. Happy Mai Tai episode, Steve. Mai Tais. Cheers. We've got Mai Tais, because I bought mix the other day on a whim, and uh, here we are, drinking yep. rum drinks. It's very, uh, it's been fairly warm for San Diego, and seasonably warm. And it feels no, pretty like... Season, it is the right season for it to be it's warm. It's pretty like humid right now. It's got this tropical that's feel. Rough, that's been the rough thing. And also, one of my friends just got back from Hawaii. Oof. I'm going to go to Hawaii. Nice. Yeah. Uh, in September? In September. So that's next month, right? Where this episode drops in August? Uh, no, this episode drops on July 31st. Okay. Well, uh, in a little over a month, I'm going to be in Maui. If you happen to be a listener... Who lives in Maui or wants to make a, a jump from one of the other <laughs> islands to Maui? I'll totally bring my rig and we can like podcast together. Like I'm not joking at all. Like let's hang out. I'd love to hang out with a, a Hawaiian listener. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'm gonna I be there. For have like, any. I'm gonna be there for like nine days or I something. I bet we like do. That. I bet we have at least one. Yeah. Well, it leads me to another thing. We didn't discuss new things that we're gonna talk about this episode, but uh, I've got. I ordered that uh, Epiphone Les Paul. SL? Yeah. It's supposed to arrive in September, and I'm hoping it doesn't line up with my vacation. <laughs> um, well, if you don't get a shipping notification by, like, by, I would say, like, a week before you're going on vacation, yeah. email Sweetwater and just have it shipped to me. That's a good plan. Or have it shipped to your mom. She's going to be with me. Well, then have it shipped to me. <laughs> I'll have it shipped to you, and maybe you can do some coverage of it when it shows up. Yeah. That yeah. video that I did at NAM. I wish I'd done more videos like that. Uh, this episode is going to air a week and a half after we record this. As of recording it, it has like 27,000 really? views. It's the, nuts. That's crazy because the last time I looked, it only had like four. No, every time I look at views. it, it's got another no, thousand views Jeez. on it. It's bananas. It's going to be our most popular video ever. And I just recorded it on a whim. It doesn't even feature me playing or anything. Yeah, just it's talking, just talking and holding and it. Showing pictures of the guitar like... It's crazy. That thing's nuts. Yeah. So I'm, I'm stoked to get one in just to do coverage of it. Like I wasn't planning on buying one based on my initial impressions. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, I want to buy one and see if the floor model at Nam was like dressed up to be fancy. Right. You want to think that because was it in the Gibson booth? It was. So you want to think that because it's at the Gibson booth that maybe they, you know, fixed it as much as they could yeah like they polished you know, they the set it up. Like, they actually put in extra work on setup made sure that the action and the intonation was just right you know right so it w will be interesting to see what an out of the box one does and you order from sweetwater right i did and you know big props to sweetwater by the way at nam everyone was whispering like these are gonna be 99 dollars. i can't believe these guitars are gonna be 99 dollars. and then i go on sweetwater and it's 119 I was like, okay, maybe they were wrong about the price at NAM. I'll just pay it. Three days after I ordered it, uh, my Sweetwater rep emailed me and said, hey, the price just dropped to $99. Can you believe it? I'm crediting the uh, the difference to your to your back to your account. Yeah. So Sweetwater took really good care of me. I didn't even have to find out the, about the price change and, and ask for it. They just like automatically now, gave it to me. Now, did you get the Pacific Blue? Or I got the, the one that's uh, like closest to like a sea foam, like turquoise. turquoise. There's one that's like a blue, and the ones that are the turquoise. Yeah, the Pacific blue is like a, like a bright blue, I guess. Yeah, I really would have liked to get the yellow for personal reasons. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to keep this forever, and I think that the sea foam will sell better, and I think it'll video better too. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I agree. All right, let's. Uh, do you have anything new to talk about? I do not. Should we talk about uh, this? This. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to bring that I forgot. What is it, Steve? Uh, my new pedal board. 
Oh, yeah, you that were working little, on something. The little uh, Ikea board I built. I don't have a case for it, but I did finish it. Um, and I fe- So I, I'm, I'm bummed I don't have it here for you to look at. But basically, uh, one, the paint... <laughs> basically. That, shut up. <laughs> um, so my thought when I, when I, after I assembled it was that it would be um, better to do a coat of black first. Okay. Instead of just raw wood underneath. And I thought, because the color, the final color is, um, it's like a powder green. Um, I wouldn't quite call it sea foam, but uh, it's in that neighborhood. Sure. I don't know exactly what it's called. It's a Krylon can. Yeah, yeah. And so my thought was like, well, black underneath might make it pop more. Um, but it just goes on weird. Huh. And I don't know if it's because the that black layer is like Rust-Oleum. <laughs> Right, it uh, might be resistant to it or something but like that. But the stuff that's on top, like it just was not like really soaking in. So I had to actually like kind of mess mess with it. Because with the black stuff, like I put with the black spray paint that I had, that I did my first IKEA board with, um, I spray that stuff on, I wait like three minutes, it's like completely dry. Yeah. I know that's at least partially because, you know, it's raw wood, so it's soaking in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, ah, whatever. So I, I did the black and I did the the green on top of it and it just did not want to dry. It was like running all over the place, all this stuff. I was having issues. I ended up going in and with like some, uh, I think it was like 150 sandpaper, whatever the 100 level grid is. The one right. that's below 220. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is how not, tech, you know, in, in op- opposition to your Was like, it higher, higher grit than 220, like a finer grit? No, it's the heavier grit. Oh, okay. It's so it's like a 180 that's or like a 160 or something like that? I think it's 160. Okay. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't, I do this stuff so rarely that like, I don't know what the numbers are offhand. Sure, sure. Um, I think it's 160. Um, so I use that on just the top to like try to get out all of the runs. And then I just did like one more coat on top of it and it turned out okay. And then I put Velcro all over it. So I don't even yeah, know why cares? it mattered. <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I'm all, I'm like happy with the way it turned out, but I don't know what I'm going to do for a case because I realized in making, I made a smaller board. So the first one I made is um, I made basically, I think it's, um, about 17 by 12, which is approximately a uh, pedal train, pedal train junior. Okay. It fits like, you know, 10 standard size pedals. Um, this one I made is like, uh, probably I actually measured it. I should remember. I think it's, uh, 15 by seven. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's smaller. It's not quite so a does nano that fit. Like, like six or seven pedals? Like eight? No, it probably... Well, the the issue with it is that because of the way the slats are... So my my fr- the first board I made has three slats. Uh-huh. This one only has two. And so each slat is slightly smaller than a pedal, so it's probably more like a PT Nano type size. I could probably get creative and fit. It's like maybe five of like maybe four across and then like two with an orientation turn on top. Gotcha. So I could probably fit a maximum of eight if I got really creative, okay. um, which, which that was the goal. Like right. the goal was to make something smaller, either turn it into like a base rig or maybe like an acoustic rig or, or something. Uh, but the issue now is that like the, I realized after I, I built it and I put, the Trinity on the top of it. Cause I figure that's the maximum height of any pedal I'm going to use on it. I put it on the top row, uh, that I have no idea what the case is going to look like. <laughs> right. Right. And maybe what I need to do is I know, uh, creation sells soft cases. I'm eating a cookie by the way, which yeah, sounds that, funny all of a sudden. That's why I'm trying to keep the show moving. No, thanks. Steve. Uh, creation music company sells soft cases for their boards. So I may need to take the measurements I have and send it to them or look through their website and see if there's anything in their soft case catalog. Yeah, go check it out. And then maybe see if I can barter some uh, ad space. <laughs> Mono cases has soft cases now too. Yeah. Mono, yeah. 
They have their own pedal boards, but they sell ca- cases to go. Right, just the cases. Them. Yeah, yeah. I've seen those. Um, I, was I, didn't thinking, think, I didn't think about them at first just because I know they tend to be a little pricier than I want to yeah, sure. work with. I was thinking about getting one of those tick uh, bags that connects to the mono cases because I got a mono case a while back. And then making a board that would fit specifically inside of that so I can have everything all together. But I probably won't ever get around to it. <laughs> all right. Are we ready to uh, to move on to the regular scheduled program here? I guess. Yeah, Tom. Well, um, let's start by talking about this uh, this guitar that you found. Yeah, you yeah. Fa- you found uh, an ad on Craigslist. You put this on the on the drive, and I didn't even realize. Yeah, that. because you posted it to the Facebook group, and you're like, "Oh gosh, I just wish I had I had something I could sell right now, so I could buy this." Oh, this yeah, looks so good. Yeah, and then this morning I was supposed to take a picture of one of my guitars in order to put on Craigslist, and I forgot. So I guess I'm not <laughs> going to get this. Um, well, it might still be up if you want to try yeah. tomorrow. This is a uh, Gibson Les Paul Studio. They're asking nine hundred dollars. Um, not a lot of info. It just says comes with Bigsby tremolo and Gibson hard case. It says it's a two thousand four. Also has warranty information. Super clean and great sounding guitar. I don't know what it is about this. I don't know if it's the Bigsby. I don't know if it's it's just the particular shade of blue. But I was like, dang, like. I don't know. This looks right to I me. I like it. I don't usually like blue guitars, but I do like the look of this. It looks very nice. Although I would change things about it. Is there anything you would change about it, Steve? Um, offhand, I couldn't think of anything. Um, maybe I think those are speed knobs. I could see possibly swapping that out. For a different style um, Gibson knob or for a different style knob altogether? A, just for like a top hat. Oh, okay. Like the classic Gibson knob. But otherwise, you know, I can't think of anything. I would do cream plastic cream hard, hardware cream on this. Hardware? Yeah. Cream uh, pit guard, cream uh, uh, knobs, the cream uh, switch plate, and cream um, humbucker rings on this for sure. Right. I think that would look super sharp. Yeah. So what's kind of interesting about this, and somebody pointed out, like, this isn't, uh, doesn't, isn't quite Pelham blue. No, it's something different. Um, it's something a little different, and so I don't. It's more saturated. Know, uh, what color this is? Maybe it's um, just the the photo or the light. Maybe it is Pelham blue, and this like this guy captured it in a weird way. He put an Instagram filter on it. You know, yeah, my, you know what? I'm, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a little it's a little off. It might actually be this. Uh, so this says it, this one is a Les Paul Studio. I've seen like I've seen this blue on Gibsons before. I just like I can't quite put my finger on it. Like what color that they? I think what this. it is is it's just so shiny. Yeah, it's very shiny in this picture. Um, nine hundred dollars. I I have to sell a lot of gear really fast to get up to nine hundred dollars, yeah. and I don't think I even have that much gear. Like I'd have to sell like my entire pedal board. You could sell like Gamatron, and I don't even have it right now. Well, you could get it. Yeah, you know where it is. I do know where it is. Gamatron and a couple pedals, and you could have this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have options. Well, the other thing is, is don't like, you have a bunch of guitars you're not using? Yeah, they're all like garbage guitars, huh? The only guitar that I have that I would sell, and it's actually this is the one that I've. I've been talking about selling is the Godin. Oh yeah. And that might get you get like 180, 200 something. I'm thinking I could, I'm going to list it for three fifty. Whoa. Okay. Um, I how, paid, how much did you pay for I it? I paid 200 plus shipping for it. So yeah, like yeah. 250 basically. So 250 is your low on that, huh? Yeah. Um, I think on eBay, the price range is kind of 250 to 400. So wow. 350 is fair. I totally misjudged judged the price um, on them. And that I don't really know. Past that, like maybe that Squire Bullet, I could sell. Um, that one's tough because I paid forty for it, but it's a project that like I haven't done anything with. And at the end of the day, as nice as that neck is, it's short scale, and it's short so short scale that like I kind of hate it. Hmm. Um, the bullet, the bullet, and I think part of that is like. So for you jumping between guitars and like jumping between, I don't, I mean, I guess I shouldn't presume, like, do you ever pick up the Duosonic and you're like, this is a lot of fun, but it's also exhausting. 
I wouldn't say it's exhausting, but it's a different discipline because I have to be so mindful of how easy it is to bend the strings on it. Like I can get sideways on that guitar really quick. I find I jump I jump between scale lengths fairly fairly easily. I find with the bullet I just get lost. Um, it is now the dual sonic you have is no, super it's short. It's a twenty two five, right? No, it's like a twenty five. It's super short. No, twenty five is long. No, I mean twenty dot five. Oh, it's really short, or like a twenty two, or I think something. it's twenty two. It's really um, super short. I think the bullet was is also 22, but I'm not 100% sure. It's definitely like everything about it screams three-quarter size guitar. Um, but so I bought that for 40. It's not 100% working right now, so I don't know that I could get more than $100 for it. And it would have to be like to the right person. And I think that's the problem is I don't think I want to deal with putting it up and having to like shuffle through oh this is a squire oh no, no, no. it's like no it's an old guitar and if you know like if you, you know what it is you should drop it off it. here sometime and let me do a demo of it at some point well that's the thing is it's not like 100% working right now oh okay well get it working um, Steve I, need, I don't have any don't have any space to set up like a, a repair shop in my house Right now, like I don't, I don't have the, anywhere to set up my tools. Is really the issue. So the, I should probably just bite the bullet and re- I have a table that I can set up outside. I should bite the bullet because the reality is we live in San Diego. If I leave my heart, like my soldering iron, outside overnight, it's not going to explode. Get a bunch, get an outside like tool table and get a bunch of plastic totes and put everything away in plastic totes. When oh, you're yeah. done. Well, the issue is that I don't want to put stuff away. Right. Right. Like, I want to be able to take the guitar apart on one night and then, like, because I'm going to have, that's the issue is I have to do all this stuff, like, either at night or in the morning. Okay, so the uh, the Duosonic is 22.5. Right. Um, Scale length. I think the bullets were, they might, the, this has a bullets 25.5, but that I don't think they're right. super short scale like you think they are. Then maybe it's just the neck size is really small. Yeah, that's more like it. Uh, because it feels really off. No, the neck is on. <laughs> they wow. got an eye roll. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Radio silence here. Super I know, interesting sorry, stuff. Sorry. Um, so I, I don't know the, the, the goat in, I think for sure I'm going to sell. I just, I, that's the guitar. I'm, that's the guitar I wanted. Um, that's just, it's not, it's not working. All right. Let's bring me the goat and let me demo the goat. All right. You want to demo the goat? Yeah. Bring it next time and I'll right. do a video of it. And then the next time you come it's by a fun guitar. Yeah. I think that's why I want to demo it. Like let's demo some of these guitars. The, the, I always do that if I feel like I need permission to sell something that I own. Sure. Then I demo it and like, well, now nothing's holding me back if I want to sell it. You know, now I've got coverage of it. Right. Right. Um, I just, you know, the last two times I've played electric guitar out, I brought the Telecaster and that thing just feels like home. Yeah. And I think that's the problem. Is You're I've a red got, Telecaster? I've, yeah. That thing is like, that is my comfort zone oh totally that's your that's uh, steve's signature guitar and so i just i don't know like what it really is with the godin is i think that the hump the pickups output is kind of low there's probably things i could do it but there's also just things w- about like the neck that just feel not not bad right there's nothing wrong with the guitar i'm just not feeling it gotcha so I I don't know it's kind of a bummer. Um, anyway, we were talking about this last. I'm Paul. at the bottom of my my time. That's sad, dude. Uh, we're talking sad. about this Les Paul. Um, one of the comments that we got on it because I posted it and someone was like, I always I never pictured you as a humbucker guy, and it's true. I have been using my humbucker. But your Telecaster has a humbucker in it. It does. It's but the thing is, so back in the when the morning glass. Uh-huh. I only used the bridge position on like two songs. Oh, interesting. And they were both songs that were like a lot of like distortion. Gotcha. Otherwise, everything was the neck pickup. Huh. 
Uh, but every, it's a strat neck pickup in that, isn't it? It's a it? strat neck, neck pickup. I've been using the humbucker more at church because my rig is a little noisier and because we're doing everything in in ears now. Yeah. People are like, oh, what's that hum? What's that hum? It's like, <laughs> that's called electric guitar, bro. Yeah. Deal Ugh. with it. And, that's uh, what I sound like. But uh, so I've been using the humbucker more at church. And even that humbucker, I think. I've never been 100% sure what it is, but I was told it was a Seymour Duncan Custom, mm-hmm. uh, the SH5, I think. Uh, so I've always just gone with that with describing it. I know it sounds good. Yeah. I like the way it sounds. The the Seymour Duncan that came in my Titan loadout sounds really, really good. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. If, if this... I haven't... There have been certain guitars that have not been moving very quickly on our Craigslist... Yeah. So it's possible that this guitar, because, especially since they're asking 900 and it is I it can't believe be, we're still stuck on this thing. It could be up for a while. Uh, what do, you, do you think this is a fair price, or do you think this is steep right now? I think it's right. I think it's maybe a... Um, you think oh, it's right, but you I hear in your voice you think there's some wiggle room there. I think you could push it, but the thing is, is the Les Paul Studio Fadeds I've been seeing lately are in the six to seven hundred dollar range already. Mm-hmm. This is a little older, two thousand four. Um, so I don't know, uh, but that's know, not a bad year. Two thousand four no, is a not. decent year. I'm not saying it's a bad year. It's before they were. It's in the sweet spot before they were making big mistakes, but after they were making other big mistakes, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> What I mean more is just that it's kind of in this space of... Uh, it's not the premium version, but it's, it's not it's like... Old, the, it's old enough. I, I'm just saying it's old enough that maybe you could push somebody on it. Sure. Like uh, I think you could. I think you could throw like a trade into this and get him to sweeten that price. Like if you threw the right pedal maybe. in or something like that. Or he said, you haggle with him first. You get him down to like 825 and you're like, well, what if I throw this pedal in? And it's like a sweet pedal from like our demo collection. Right. And right. like, will you knock off another hundred bucks? And it's like, oh, this is like a $200 pedal. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's what I need to do is, is uh, it doesn't say anything here about no trades or anything. Yeah. So maybe I just need to be like, hey, uh, is there anything, are there any, what kind of guitar pedals are you interested in? I happen to have access to a lot of them. Yeah. We'll figure something out. How do you feel about JHS? <laughs> do we have any JHS pedals? I don't yeah, even know. But I, the ones that we have is because I like them. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> There's some pedals that I'd pull out that uh, that you could trade for sure. Yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll figure something out. And I, yeah. I think that's a dynamic of my... The whole I never pedal, thought about that. The whole pedal thing that we have here is that you could use them for trade bait. No, I know. <laughs> I actually, You know, I'm looking at different... Oh, is that it? I think this is a color. Jeez, that's electric. Um, but I'm not. So that's the other thing is they might try to make the argument. The Mai Tai is working. I think that's like a teal blue it is might be what the technical color is. It's like Lego blue. Um, but I'm not seeing any with Bigsby's when I'm looking through Google Images. Maybe it's Let's move on. We could just talk about something you know, This stupid. has a Vibramate on it, dude. Is that a Vibramate on there? I don't know. No, it's not. I think I can recognize a Vibramate. It doesn't have a Vibramate, which means this is screwed into the body. Yeah, whatever. Okay. I, I, I would want the Bigsby. Yeah, so that was the thing. The yeah, guy you would like, want the Bigsby. The guy who was like, oh, yeah, the you, you never struck me as a humbucker guy. I was like, for this, like, for this guitar with a Bigsby, like, I would... I, I think you, if you it. got this guitar, I think you should put a humbucker size B90 in the neck. You know what I would put in in this? What? Uh, Roadhouse. Oh. Valco's. Nice. I forget those Kingston's in the, in in the, the Roni. In the stinkers. Those pickups are the Yeah, best. they're super nice. Love those pickups. Super nice. So that's, I think that's what I would try to chase down. Huh. Or I might uh, hit up McNelly and see, uh, see what, uh, yeah, what I he just, might recommend. I just did an interview with with uh, Brian Porter, if you uh, sweet, oh, yeah. if you sweet there's talk, a, there's a lot of you know. That's yeah. the thing is, there's a if lot you talk of good to him. I bet, I bet he he could get you lined up with some something really cool for that. So yeah, well, it all is uh, pending on me finding nine hundred dollars. <laughs> no, Steve is pending on you finding eight hundred dollars and talking him down and throwing a pedal in. <laughs> well, I'll just say like it's, I, it's July. In complete honesty. 
For another day, it's July. It's for another day, it's July. It's been like a tough. Things aren't for, selling for super me. Great. Like it's no, it, just in general in life. Like my 2017 has been like a little rougher. I think than anticipated or just not as smart. Or maybe I've just been more aggressive about paying down things. This trumps America. It, it could be a lot of different things. I don't know. But by this point, I should have enough sinusoid money to buy this. <laughs> that's that's true, Steve. Uh, what are you doing with your money? I'm buying groceries. Well, now you're telling a sad, sad story. That's what I, That was where I was going <laughs> with this. <laughs> Thanks, um, sinusoid, for that grocery money. <laughs> <laughs> I did buy I did buy that SBN Trinity. Yeah. Uh so I I mean I bought a few pedals this year that maybe should have I should have saved up for this. You Let's didn't know call. this was coming, Steve. I didn't. I didn't. All right. Uh, let's actually hit a topic. Yeah, let's get a topic going. Uh here. this first topic um somebody uh emailed us uh Ethan yeah, Ethan Same, Ethan Barker. Yeah, he emailed us because he was commenting on our on the uh, the Epiphone LPSL video. Yeah, and, and someone said something. I just want to start with this. Sure. Some, someone said something very rude in a comment in response to him. Uh, he basically called him like the retard word, <laughs> uh, which is not acceptable. Like I said it to reference it, but I think I've been thinking about this more and more. We need to extend the "don't be a dick" rules to YouTube and start treating YouTube as, as one of our social media outlets rather than just like, Oh, it's just YouTube. Right. It's because- a little broader, but like I would say if someone, I would say with YouTube, if someone's being a dick to us, we or like someone that we know is like one of our people. No, no. I, w- I would say if someone's being a dick to us directly, like say, oh, okay, I see where you, you're going. you are stupid and you are stupid for making this video. Then they're just baiting my then my revenge. We just leave it. Okay. But if somebody's attacking somebody else for asking us a question, or like presenting their own question, you know, like to, yeah. to the community, yeah, then that's where we would be like, no. I mean, there's so, a difference between attacking and and being a dick. You can attack and not sure, be a dick. Sure. Like this guy was being a dick. It's no longer acceptable to me. I reported him to YouTube and got the comment like taken down. Who knows what happened? Well, you to can you. take down the comment. Yeah, on I can take down the comment, take down but comment I reported want. him, and I'm not going to stand for this stuff anymore because it's just like YouTube has long been a den of horrendous people. Yeah, and YouTube. We they always say it. like there there are so many channels, even gear channels. I've had people say like, "Oh, you you guys are doing gear. You turn your comments off, right?" No, we don't because we're because we're not cowards. Um, <laughs> but a lot. But I don't want to say a lot of channels because some of them I've, do. But I've come across gear channels where people have like added to their description. Like I turned off comments because everybody was like being abusive, being like, like being aggro, and I just yeah. like this is a video of like my kids singing. Yeah. Oh, totally. Um, but I mean when. When you look at the numbers on our YouTube channel, we're getting like 4,000 views a day on average. Right. It's crazy. There's no reason it can't be a community that we foster the same uh, kind of culture that we have in our other online communities and, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So all this being said, the question is, um, basically, uh, why are budget guitars typically bolt-on? I've read a lot of different places that how the neck is attached doesn't affect the price, but guitars in the sub two hundred dollar range are usually bolt on. Any thoughts or ideas why? Um, and my first thought is uh, we need to figure out the Skype thing because we should have Doug Cower answer. This oh, question. absolutely, absolutely. The, um, I, mean, I mean, I told him in in emails like this is really a question for the Lutherist podcast, right? But I feel like I've listened to that podcast enough that I can actually give a theoretical qualified answer to this okay so here's my angle go because the the articles and the the pieces i've seen where people are saying like the price isn't different building a bolt-on versus a glued neck i think Mm -hmm. that's absolutely true when you're talking about higher end instruments where there's someone who is sitting there building them small runs one, one at a time it's like you know some guy you know like even a Doug Cower or, you know, Paul Roney who works at, at Veritas now or, you know, Sully, these, these builders that we know, um, if they're building a bolt-on or a set neck, it's pretty much the same amount of work for them. 
It's just a different process. Right. Where with a cheap guitar, I'm betting that the bolt-on process just lends itself a little bit better to a factory environment for dealing with quality control issues than a set neck does. Right. It's probably a little more foolproof. It's like if on you're the ma- on the mass production yeah. side, but that being said, like uh, you know, you consider that on the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest side. I can't think of anything that is set neck under two hundred dollars. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. But though. when you consider that a Mexican Stratocaster, yes, is what six hundred dollars now, something like that. The cheapest set neck Epiphone is like un, is like four hundred dollars, right? So there is crossover between these two like build but styles. There's, there's there's other guitars from other companies that are bolt on that are in that same range as the Epiphone. It's, it's the cheapest set. Neck. Sure, but I'm saying like I'm saying like a Squire bolt on, which is made in China. Sure, the highest end maybe Squire bolt on. It, so like a CV, the classic vibe series, yeah, yeah. fantastic guitars. Absolutely. Is in the same price range, I think. I'm not looking this up. I should look it up, but I won't. Sure, sure. Um, as like an Epiphone Les Paul standard. Maybe, right, Maybe right. it's a little cheaper. Well, there's some weird, cro- like you'd think like, oh, there's equivalents across brands. Like there's crossover in between Squire and Epiphone and Fender and Epiphone. Like... Like Mexi- yeah. Mexican fenders kind of cross over into Epiphone territory and Epiphones cross over into Squire territory. So it's like there's not direct comparisons all the time. Right. But it, I think it really comes down to, like I was saying, like if someone is is like one-offing or building, you know, kind of small builder versions of guitars, the, the labor intensity is not that much different between yeah. a set neck and a you, bolt on. You you're still make- building, you're still building a neck and you're still building a neck pocket and you're, uh, and you're adhering it to the body in mm-hmm. a way that requires some precision measurement and sure. precision adjusting, um, where in a factory environment, um, something about a bolt on is just a little bit more forgiving with guitars that are just being blasted out a hundred at a time, you know? Yeah. I mean, in theory, you should be able to, you know, with the proper machinery, yeah, just crank out necks and crank out bodies and screw them together and everything's good. But it's also like a, a quality control angle. Cause it's like, if you're building, you know, a hundred dollar guitars, a hundred and seventy five dollar guitars, yeah. two hundred dollar guitars. If you screw up the neck, you don't want to throw that body away. Right. You just want to throw another neck on it. That's that's a big part of your profit margin right there. Where if you're making a you know a twenty five hundred dollar guitar, four thousand dollar guitar, and you screw up, you just start over. Like that's part of the you know cost of what you're doing. Like you start over the whole thing if you have to. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a different response to the quality control in your price point, or you if you're working at, at that level, you know how to remove a set neck. Like right, you do what you got to do to to make your money because that's your livelihood. Um, and here's here's the real heart and soul of this. The counterpoint of this yeah. whole argument is that the troll, the person who said the terrible things on the YouTube channel in the comments, was trying to make the point that bolt-ons are garbage and that they are you know that they are the lower quality version of a build which is absolutely not true i you know i saw the comment and i didn't think it that that was necessarily what they were that was the angle they were but there was definitely an angle of like come on idiot like obviously at 99 dollars, there's no way it could be a set neck when the reality is that like you could take a you could take a cnc Carve out a bot. I maybe. I mean, I could be way off. I but as what as far you, as the cuts go, you I, can, I you, could you can I get could, you, the CNC can get the the cut for a neck to fit with the body every right. time. I, I mean, I there, could, there take, could be inconsistencies with the truss, with the fretwork, and things like sure, that. Sure, sure. But you're going to have those no matter what. Yeah. Um. My thought, and and maybe I'm missing something. Is it's completely possible that I'm just forgetting something right now, sure, or sure. I just don't know. But right now, in my mind, if since all of these guitars are mass-produced, 
like not even like CNCs in the sense of like, oh, it's just program, but like it's straight up like robots. Right. Like there's no human putting the blank on the CNC machine and then pushing go. It's just robots loading wood. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, so at that point, like, the only difference between a bolt-on and a set neck, like you're saying, is a glue. Is whether or not you're going to take the extra time to put the glue and, like, clamp it. Well, it, so I'm not even no- saying that the difference is the glue. Because you're just talking about, are they gluing or are they screwing? I mean, this got very sexual all of a sudden. Are they gluing or screwing? That's the title of the episode. Um, what I'm saying it comes down to is quality control like you you screw the neck on it gets to quality control they do a basic test a basic check if a fret is screwed up on a on a set neck they're just throwing the whole guitar away right if a fret is screwed up on a bolt-on they're like take the neck off let's get a new neck on here throw the neck away like they're not going to fix the fret there's not time you look at some of the ultra ultra low prices that you can get for a set neck chipson right I think that's reflective of what's actually possible. Right, but the uh, the the costs there are different on the manufacturing side. And the, are they? And there's also r- reports of really sketchy quality control on some of those chipsons. Well, I mean, there is that. We're qual- talking about forgeries, right? Not just Epiphones? Yes. yes. Okay. So that's there is a quali- the, a big quality control question there. Like sometimes people will get it's a gamble. Sometimes people will get one and be like, "Wow, this place just as good as yeah. you know, like my American Gibson." And some people will be like, "Wow, the neck might as well be on backwards." Right, but you know, I've been seeing more. I've been seeing a few brands here and there finally doing. I saw one the other day. Uh, <laughs> though stupidly on their part, they probably should have done a little more research. They were Bad Cat guitars. Okay. Uh, not to be confused with bad cat ampli- bad cat ampl- amplification, uh, but they were making guitars clearly being made. Well, I, you know, I looked through the thing, but there, there, there were also certain things about the build that were like hallmark um, import instruments, uh, mostly just an overuse of abalone. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. Um, but you know, that's they were doing the thing that I've been saying is like. Uh, there, I don't, or you know, slit guitars from GFS or whatever sure, sure. else. It's like there's no reason that these Chibson factories, like that, and and it ultimately is like the goal. I think for some of them is for somebody to come in and say, no, like you're making this Les Paul body type. I want my headstock on it, right, with my logo. And I'll do the quality control. You ship them to me. Right, But right. if I reject it, you know, whatever they have in place for the contract for yeah, rejections. Yeah, figure it out. Um, and I, that's, a, that's a methodology that I think is interesting. I saw a, a comment, you know, since we're talking about YouTube. Uh, someone the other day on one of them, on one of the videos, it might have been on the SL, was saying how they have a vintage, a vintage is a brand. Yes. Uh, which is kind of confusing, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's a confusing name. Uh, but as far as I know, I think Vintage is made in China. And Vintage is another one of these, like, kind of a chipsony sort of brand. Uh huh. But again, I, you know, they're one that I feel like is kind of doing it the right way, where they're not, you know, selling fake Gibsons. They're going to they have their them, own brand. They're going to have their own brand. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, as far as. Cheap boltons go, you know. Personally, I'm not a fan. Uh, I guess I, you know, I don't have really any experience. My, I mean, my favorite cheap bolton is Michael. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, uh, we, tweed we Telly. Just, Let's look at this Tweed Telly. Let's look at this Tweed Telly. We've talked about guitars in the past that are made to look like amps, and this is another one. Yeah, this is a Bowler Brothers Tweed Telecaster Custom Boutique Telly. Amal, Amal Fitano Pickups. Okay. No idea. Uh, what's special about this guitar? This is a highly unique, one-of-a-kind Bowler Brothers Muddy Model Guitar with an aged Tweed Amp theme finish. 
The guitar was given a vintage amp look, complete with grill cloth, chicken head, knob controls, and even a Fender logo. <laughs> the Fender logo is not where you would expect it to be. Uh, the features include a Bigsby tailpiece with a compensated aluminum bridge, humbucker and single coil pickup configuration with custom wound Alma Fitano pickups, rosewood fingerboard, and a matching tweed headstock. The guitar has a wonderful sound that opens up nicely thanks to the thin line design. Condition, great shape overall. The tweed finish, metal parts, and neck were all given a tasteful age look by Bowler Bros. This was only... The, the, the only noticeable play wear is a slight discoloration of the tweed on the lower base side belt. The fingerboard and frets are in fantastic shape with hardly any play wear and tons of life left in them. The neck is super comfortable with great action and the truss rod functions perfectly. All electronics and parts are in perfect working condition. And then just a bunch of description of it's cotton tweed with shellac. Um, Bigsby with compensated bridge, blah, 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 blah. I keep looking at this and asking myself, do I like this? Like, I feel like I like this, but I realize it's 850. The thing that I like about this is just that it has the Telecaster style of big speech from all on it. Like that's the only thing I like about it. I look at the other details and I just hate it. I like this more. in concept. I, the one thing I don't actually, think the concept is executed well though. The thing that I don't like, well, okay. So a couple different things. Um, I don't like the humbucker. Yeah, me either. Wrong look for this. Um, it should be more like a, uh, it should be more like a broadcaster single pickup. I think the fender logo is fine. I think the control layout looks really slick. Here's my piece on the control layout. Uh, I I like that it's a cutaway, like an amp control cutaway. Uh-huh. Uh, it, they're not straight cuts. It's got a bow to it. They're, like if if it was tighter and a little straighter, I would I would be more about it. You mean it. it's because it's bow or because it's rounded? It, there's rounded edges in the straightaways. So, right, and so that was going to be my complaint about it as well. Is that I understand that with a cloth finish like this, it's a little tougher. No, this is a woodcut um, issue. This isn't this, the cloth. Yeah, no, I agree. That's a woodcut issue. And I think that's what detracts from this is is that the control panel, I think, could have been sharper. Yeah. Um, and just overall, like, the softness of the way the tweed folds. God, this is so pedantic. It's the pedantic version of this. This, what, this show doesn't exist without pedantic, Steve. I know. Um, it's just, it, I, there's, there's the lack of sharp edging is, is hard. It is. And, I, I don't and, like, I don't like and the, maybe it is that because, because the upper part, like if I cover the, the bottom half and I look at the upper part, like that's a straight line for that grill cloth. Yeah. And that looks okay. It's definitely but then the, the cur- cartoonish ballooning. The curve that, that follows the shape of the guitar is not consistent to my eye. It's, yeah, it's no, wandering no. a little bit. Like it just feel it, it just feels kind of amateur all around. Like I've seen this concept done really well by other builders. Right. I'm not a fan of this execution. Right. And also, like, I'm not a fan of this concept in general, even when it's done really well, because I don't like the thought of having my arm rest on tweed on a guitar. Yeah. You know? So that's my piece on it. All right, let's 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 move on to the next topic. Uh, who sent this in to us? I'm looking for it. Yeah, let's find it. Should have we paused I to, know. to pull back the curtain. We paused a little bit to get drinks and go to the bathroom, and now we're back. And by drinks... Where's your water, water, dude? I drank it already. Dang. I'm a fast drinker when it comes to water. Usually you label the topics as topics, but you didn't do it this I time. I know. I totally screwed up. Uh, so the concept here was uh, if someone's post on the Facebook group and like, uh, my repair bill was just as much as a Titan for yeah. like their car yeah. or something like that. Are you sure you took a screenshot of I it? I did. Because I don't see it. I saw it earlier. Anywhere. Come on. Oh, there it is. It just says when the repair when the repair bill for your car is as much as a Titan. Sad face. Um, and then somebody else said, "Yeah, I bought a vintage JMP with my car bill a few weeks ago." Of course, referencing a Marshall JMP, one of the classic Marshall amps. Right. Oh, um, I think I found. Yeah, I found it from Nathaniel Bernacker. Yep. He uh, so, who just played the wheel of pedals, didn't he? Yeah. 
Yeah, he just won a... Uh, a Cinders fo- and... No, he won the faux tape echo. Oh, he won the faux tape. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Delay for delay. That was a good win. Um, so, yeah, um, I kind of feel this a little because I got my car insurance bill coming up, and that at least would, uh, you know, score half of a Titan. Yeah. I have my insurance stuff auto deduct out of my account right which is kind of rough but also like i don't have to think about it so it doesn't hurt in another way mine's like every six months which, yeah uh I'm not the biggest fan of i like doing it annually even though i kind of was like just putting it on credit when we were doing it annually but at least i didn't have to think about it yeah. for a year i mean every time i mean every time i go to the dentist it's like man this is like all this money for this little piece of hard like calcium in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. It could be like the craziest amp in the world. It, you know, it's kind of interesting to think about that stuff, but it's also like frustrating and, you know, being uh trying to be like globally aware or trying to be like uh a you responsible know, adult, spiritually aware or whatever. Like you think of all of the different things that things pay for. Like, yeah, you know, we're, we're talking earlier. Like, if I can sell my guitar for two hundred dollars, that's f- like f- fifteen trips to In and Out. It really is. <laughs> well, then I was actually thinking about that the other day. It's like my wife and I had our anniversary. We went out and had dinner. Where'd and, you guys go? And drink. We did like we decided like. Hey, let's go to dinner to one place. Let's go get drinks at another place. And let's go get dessert at another. And like just kind of cruise around okay. the town. So we went and got ramen at a place over in Kearney Mesa. Okay. And then we went and got drinks at a place down by the airport. Okay. And then we went downtown and got dessert at Garadelli. Uh. But at the end of the night, I looked at you know all the receipts in my pocket. And I was like, oh, man, I could have bought like this pedal. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> but it's like, yeah, that's that's that night went by and all the the money went into my belly a cu- a cu- and it, into the experience that we had. And I didn't have anything to show for, you know, the next day or whatever. No, the next day you did have something to show for it. Then you flush that down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, no, and then like uh, a pedal would last for, you know, my entire life. But it's, it's like you're, we, we can't quantify these other costs in our lives against the cost of gear because it's not, they're not the same things. Right. Like you can't like put a price on memories and celebrating like important things and, you know, and, you know, responsible stuff like making sure your vehicle works and making sure your teeth work and things like that. Yeah, you like kind of need those teeth. It's harder to, to quantify that when it's really easy for us to sit here and quantify there's, there's always that, gear. There's always that question of like, you know, so and some of it's tolerance. Like you're talking about dental work or like in this case, like auto repair. Like at the end for for a lot of people, for the vast majority, I'm sure, of people who listen to the show, gear is a convenience. Oh like, sure. Yeah. Having uh <coughs> an, you know, just to throw it out there, having a um a, a Morgan amp or whatever. You know, having a <coughs> excuse me, having a a Fender American Bloody Da or whatever. You know, yeah, like yeah. Having three, four thousand dollars wrapped up in gear, it's at the end of the, of the day, like it's convenience. Like, well, it's a hobby too. People made music for years without any of this stuff. Sure, right? sure. For decades. Yeah. Um, but you know, how much money would you pay to make that toothache go? I know for you, Oh man, th- there has been a conversation in our group of friends. This has happened. And maybe you have been privy to this. I don't know. That, I was a dick for like that, a year. Like basically you getting a root canal, like changed your life. No, it did. <laughs> no, I had, I had a tooth that went bad and I got a crown on it. Well, it hadn't gotten bad to, to my understanding. And I got a crown on it. And I was just kind of like in this persistent like background pain right. and aggravation, and it, my tooth was like rotting in my head and like flushing like rotting flesh into me. Sure. And so my body knew something was wrong, and it made me a dick for literally a year until my tooth got so bad that I was in excruciating pain and had to go get a root canal. The moment I got a root canal, I was my same old self again. 
Which is just less of a dick, but still less a dick. Less of a, but you know, more, I'd say a more reasonable dick. Okay. Is that fair? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. No, I think that's fair. Like, you know, it was a very clear difference in my life where after I got the root canal, I was like, oh my gosh, I can think again. Right. I'm existing as like an emotionally stable person again. Like, this is incredible. Where I wasn't exactly aware of how bad it was when I was in the moment. Well, but the th- then once it changed, it was like, wow, is, my life is, is think, better now. I think we credited most of it to like your five hours of sleep a night. Uh, well, that was going on too. I was a new dad and I wasn't getting a lot of sleep, but I'm not getting a lot of sleep now either. Right. And, you're, and I'm doing and you're much better. At least a, a little bit better. I'm a little better. Uh, hey, I, I didn't make fun of, uh, of that band when the singer committed suicide a week ago. Like, and I'm, here we are. Here we are. I'm a more sensitive, less dickish adult now where I pre, wa- pre root canal Ryan might have said terrible things. Uh, How about that? All right. All right. And I'm still not saying terrible things. I'm just saying that I would have said them if I was in that state. I would have burned you to the ground. <laughs> <sighs> uh, you would have had the right to. Um, so, yeah, no, it, it's interesting to think about that. It's interesting to think about it in both directions. And it's a conversation that happens a lot. I just saw, I actually saw one recently where people were, where a guy was saying, like, you know, about how electric guitar in modern church music is like is it the least important part of a, of the church band because so many of and and i guess the premise was it really that, depends on the church right and, and the premise was i guess if you're following like the trends of the biggest churches then you're you're starting to see more and more synth sure um but for for years guitar has been Right. Making synth sounds, so right. <laughs> uh, so it, it kind of depends on that, but like you know, it's kind of that idea, and and the i the the corollary was that corollary sounds like a serious medical condition. Uh, uh, that the you know that guitar players are the ones that invest the most money in their gear that they're using. Because, you know, I bring a, an amp that I got for free with a bunch of pedals that <laughs> I may or may not have paid for <laughs> with podcast sponsors. No, uh, in, all, in all seriousness, like, I, I don't know what my board is worth, but it's not unusual for, like, typical church musicians oh, sure. to go in with at least $1,000 worth of pedals. Oh, easy. You know, and a, an, a guitar that's worth, you know, at least six or seven hundred dollars and an amp that's, minimum an amp that's worth six or seven hundred dollars i mean if you want to be taken seriously i'm saying like i'm saying like this <laughs> no, is like, easily yeah i'm saying you know this is like if you're going in with like a deluxe reverb and a fender highway one i mean typ- or a les paul studio i mean typically i'm going got to it all use i'm going to church with a you know thousand dollar plus guitar on average like a two thousand dollar twenty five hundred dollar pedal board rig and a uh, and a two hundred dollar amp. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Boss Katana. <laughs> well, dude, like every time I every time I've played, I've been using I've been, the last few times since I've gotten it, I've been using that uh the Wong's Mini Five. That Have thing, you? That thing works. Nice. Um. Anyway, uh, though the last time I used it, I noticed that the with the boost. I have to monitor the boost from the Trinity because that thing I can overdrive oh, the yeah, front end real fast. Oh, I bet. Uh, <coughs> but anyway, the point being that like the the idea of like church musicians, church guitarists invest a, more money in their in, in their instrument than it's worth. And one, I would disagree with it from the perspective of like I look at it the same way like a car enthusiast looks at his car, like. You can buy a freaking whatever Mustang, put in all of the ex- fancy exhaust stuff, sure. put in the headers and the footers and the <laughs> whatever siders. else, and uh, adjust the margins <laughs> and, and everything to uh, to make it whatever. But you don't have to. You could have bought a Kia. Yeah. You'd get the same... End Why result. don't you just get a Kia and throw a Hemi in it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean you could get the you get the same result, which is you drive it from one location to another. Of course, right? of course. Uh, so well, I, it's, the, I, it's the model train enthusiast thing that I was talking about sure, last episode. Sure. Like, this is hobby level stuff. I mean, like 
the, perf- the the performance and the music making is one part of it, but then the collecting of gear and obsessing over gear is the hobby part of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, dude, repair bill tie in. I I put down, I think a thousand dollars on my car like a month ago. Whew. Uh, Dude, did I, I, sh- really did like- I show you those pictures? You did with the radiator? Yeah, with the radiator. Yeah, so that was $1,000. Yeah. So that's almost a tie-in. I've been really lucky with my cars for a bunch of years now. I haven't had any big bills, which I'm happy about. Yeah. I could go spend it's like 600 bucks if I wanted to getting the AC in my car fixed because it's all the control panel. It's not like a recharge or anything like that. Oh. And it's okay. like cost like $400 to get yeah, the replacement apparent, paddle. Apparently the issue with my air conditioner was that my con- condenser had a hole in it. Yeah, your freaking radiator <laughs> took a hit from a seagull or something like that. You hit a you hit it's a, a box spring. You hit a desert tortoise and like destroyed <laughs> half your car and were was unaware of it for <laughs> Nine months or something. Hey, at least my car didn't overheat. Exactly. Your car was still working, which was a miracle. I saw those pictures. This is a miracle. You were still rolling, dude. I should, I should have posted those. You to, still can. Yeah, I know. I, I've we're got talking about it phone. now. Uh, what is this? Car talk? Yeah. Uh, I think you made that joke when we talked about I'll it. I'll make it every time we talk about cars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, trying to think of a, a bill in my life where I didn't have how much to, did Henry cost? I, oh gosh, how does he, how much does he cost every day? You know, <laughs> no. How much how much was the production of Henry? Oh man, how much did it cost to produce my child? I don't even remember the hospital bill, but I w- I could have gotten a Titan for sure. Um, I'll tell you, I could have bought a freaking cower for the cost of Whoa, Claire. Really? Straight up. Insurance didn't cover very much. <sighs> We got bare bones, man. That's bronze oh, level. Oh, so you've got like a like a big deductible. Uh, I had like no deductible. Whoa, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, you got to hit limits first, and that limit's five thousand dollars. Sheesh, dude. I'm sorry. So uh, well, we've we, got like a really old insurance plan that is really good, but really expensive. But we keep paying it because we know that like <laughs> we'll never get anything that good again for what we're paying. No, we uh, we are because we, I've been paying out of pocket for a while. Well, no, for not that long, but like, well, no, for a while uh, since we, so my first kid, Penelope, again, like she's seven. So this was years ago and it was when I was working at UCSD. Some would say seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) uh, When I, when she was born, we paid 250. 250? Yeah. Damn, dude. And that was when I was paying like 30, maybe $30 a month for health insurance. But I was working for... I was working for the government. Uh, I was working for seven U- years ago, huh? I was working at UCSD. Obama's America. <laughs> no, this was uh, this is the benefit of working for a university. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and then when Claire was born, I was contracting, so I was just buying insurance out of pocket, and we were just you know trying to get get by with like death insurance, basically. Right. Uh, so our this was Obama's America. <laughs> It's still Obama's America. Um, and so this, her, hers was, um, I remember swiping for 1500 or 1600 in the hospital. Like they uh-huh. brought us the bill in right, the hospital right. room. Like if you don't pay this, we're going to put the baby back. Right. Uh, and then later we got another bill for everything else. Like for the things that hadn't been calculated yet. Oh, man. Uh, and I think that one was like $3,000. So when I say like, when I say cower, like I'm talking about like. A real cower. I'm talking about like a, the. A banshee. The super. Is it. What's what's the one that's the Simpsons theme one that he just came <laughs> out with? <laughs> I forget. Uh, the, no, he the, did that like a year ago. The, is it. The, I forget the model name. It's It's after that truck. The Simpsons SUV. What is it? It's like oh a, yeah, yeah. I forget what that the. I'm not a huge Simpsons fan, so I forget what that one's called. Uh, oh, the Canyonero. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's the Canyonero. That was basically um, like what I could have gotten Doug to build for the for the cost of my second child. Uh huh. Um. So yeah, I mean it's it's. Uh, I don't know. That, I guess that's probably the biggest bill I've ever paid. Yeah. But I'm thinking like, I'm trying to think of a bill that 
I pay that I could probably skip it. And what would that buy me? You know, like what could I stop paying for? And what kind of gear could I get for that? Food, man. I guess I could downgrade go, food. Go look at your restaurant bill for the last month. I don't eat out that you much. You guys don't eat no. out that much? Like when we do, it's like once or twice a week we go get Mexican instead oh, okay. of making. So it's probably not too bad. Yeah, it's not like we're going to a sit down restaurant or anything like that. We we've been doing a lot. God, this is getting so sideways. Who cares? Uh, we've been doing better, but that the uh, that we had one weekend where we went to the Prado. Yeah, uh, which is like a nice uh, sit down restaurant. Which is like a it's a nice sit down, and it's in like a very touristy part of San if Diego. If you tried, you could get you, you could spend three figures there. No, we did. Yeah, uh, we. No, did. But you, it's kind of on the edge where you could you could do, do two figures or you could do three figures. You could do two figures if you don't order any beverages. Sure, I guess. Uh, well, I mean, if you only ordered entree and like soft drinks, right? So right. both of us, like, I had two beers and Melissa had a margarita. Okay. That did you us, have Did you have over. appetizers? No. Oh, interesting. No, no appetizers. That was still three figures. I guess the booze does Well, no, it. it was just under and then with the tip. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. We did that, and then we did Slater's two days later. Uh-huh. And Slater's was way... But again, I had two beers, and one of them was $15. Whoa, dude. It was... Uh, I've never been to Slater's. It was the um, brewery ninth anniversary. Okay. Uh, it was, do you remember when you guys took me out for my, I think it was, I think, yeah, it was mine. Uh, dad's night out before yeah. Claire was born. Yeah. It was, uh, so they had a uh, tire tire had Avery Rumpelstiltskin. Okay. Um, this was basically like equivalent to that, like super high test. Gotcha. Uh, I think it was 15, it was basically 15% and $15, uh, poured in a tulip. Very sweet, yeah. Because at Lots that alcohol sugar. level, it's it has to have a lot of sugar. Yeah, I, I haven't had anything like that high that wasn't sweet. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. The so I mean, in one weekend, I could have bought a Boss DD7. Oh, totally. Or you could you could have bought uh, the Keeley compressor. Yeah, and, and had money left over. And had money left over. You could have bought uh, probably one of those new JHS pedals that came out, you know? Yeah. Uh, one of the version threes or whatever of, of all the things that they're putting out. Uh, man, th- there's lots of stuff. Are we getting stuff for, for those? Are you working on those? Uh, I don't know. I It sounded like the, they were interested and then it went cold a little bit. By the time this episode comes out, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You probably shouldn't have brought that up on the show. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it either is or it isn't. I know it was something yeah. that was like mentioned. Like I don't it was be- a I don't flyby, believe, but. Yeah, I don't believe that any demo is going to happen until the pedal shows up on my right, door, basically. Right. And so I don't get mentally attached to it. Sure. Um, let's, let's move on to something else and talk about yeah, other stuff. Yeah, uh, our next topic somebody uh, found a listing that is a podcast room. Yeah, or four, podcast rig. Four microphones with a wires and stand, 16 input mixer, uh, four pairs of headphones, like B. I don't know what like B means. I think like B is maybe somebody typos. Like, like, like new. Oh, yeah, it's got to be like new then. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what do you think? Oh, of- yeah, it's definitely like new. I'm looking at the, the keyboard layout. Okay. I don't know anything about this. I can't tell anything about this mixer. Well, there's, okay. there's a few problems I'm seeing here. I would not run a podcast rig quite like this. You wouldn't run a podcast rig with SM58s? No, I wouldn't. I mean, not for indoors. SM58s are great for like being at NAM. Like yeah, you do all your outdoor, NAM, right? live stuff where there's noisy stuff going on. The SM58 yeah. is a fantastic microphone for podcasting in those kinds of environments. Right. Um, but for in a room like this, like you got to have condensers. Yeah. You got to have condensers because, like, you can move your head around a little bit. It follows you more. It picks up more. Uh, it's easier to work with in post. Uh, so I'm not a fan of what they're doing. And then they've got pop filters working really hard to be in front of these SM57s or 58s or whatever they all have on here. And they're just stretched to their limit to get a- ahead of the mic. Right, it's, right. It's not – you're not supposed to put pop filters on SM57s like well, that. Well, they already have the, – they already have them. Um, um, yeah, they already have them built in, but uh, yeah, it, it's not, 
it's, it, the mic is too long. These pop filters can't even fit over them. And then the mixer is overkill. And I realize right. there's you don't, you don't need a, you have four microphones. What do you why do you need sixteen inputs? Yeah, there's there's a lot of different ways to run a podcast rig. A lot of the other podcasts that we know and that we talk to, they do like the phone thing or like the computer Skype thing. Well, but if you're in a room, yeah. I'm going to say this right now. I have never been a bigger fan of using a battery operated uh, field recorder like the Zoom H6 that I have. And this is why. I mean, first reason is convenience. I can take it anywhere. It's super small, right. super convenient. The second thing is it's not plugged in. None of our rig is plugged into the wall at any point. Right. There is zero risk of any like electrical interference from power. You know, the really weird thing I never thought about. What? If the power went out right now, we'd still podcast. We'd just keep recording. We'd be like, oh, what the hell? Yeah, it's dark. Oh, hey, I guess we're going to finish this. But um, like, I've never had. Like using that interface, I'm betting they've got it plugged into a computer somewhere along the line. Yeah. When we were running into a laptop, sure. that thing would crash every 30 episodes or something like that. Yeah. We'd be or halfway like, through and all of a sudden you're like, why is the why is the uh, yeah. the head on GarageBand no longer moving? But these field recorders, they're rock solid. I've never had this thing crap out on me once. Right. Once. I use this thing literally almost every single day yeah. and have for two years now, mm-hmm. a year and a half, and it hasn't crapped out on me once. If it broke tomorrow, I'd buy another one in a heartbeat. Uh, and it's got four channels into it, and there's others that, you know, you figure out your podcast needs. But I look at this rig, and I'm just like, this is a joke. All right. So uh, what I'm kind of wondering is they have four pairs of headphones. The best part of this rig is the mic stands. We could use those yes. mic stands. Yeah. Uh, that's actually... So one of the things we talked about last episode, Steve's Peeves. Uh-huh. Uh, or what was it? Steve's Hit List. Steve's Hit List. <laughs> um, and one thing that I'm I'm, inter- I'm interested in finding, I, I saw one that was kind of interesting, is a desktop tripod. Okay. Uh, where it's just a tripod that sits underneath. And so... While I've been thinking about getting a microphone that I can plug in, because I, I got an interface from one of our listeners. Oh, did you? Uh, this was a long time ago. I've had it for a while. Oh, okay. Um, what I've kind re- of mic do you want? Um, I don't know. Do I you have, have any Spur MXLs? Yes, I do. I should probably just take one. Yes, you should. And do you still have my desk, my like sh- amp tripod? I do, and I use it. Okay. Let's get you something that will um, work better for you, though. Well, maybe I'll find some kind of desktop tripod on Amazon. I'll send you the link. And okay. You can buy it for me. Okay. Out of the fund. Sure. <laughs> um, or you buy but, it and just send me a PayPal invoice. Yeah, either way. Um, so uh, anyway, the the point being that, you know, these are good. St- I don't know what my point was. The stands are good. I like the that they're the weighted stands where they have the weighted yeah. base. Yeah. Because then it, the tripods just take up a lot of space and things get like like tangled well, around the, and stuff. The, the condenser tripod I was looking at is like everything straight up and down. So it's like, sure. It just goes right in front of you. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, obviously like we use standard microphone stands here in the uh, garage, here in the garage <laughs> and they do take up a lot of room. Yeah. And I use, um, I've been thinking about for the, the amp stands is getting those ones that clamp onto the cab. Oh, right. For saving room in my recording area. Right. Uh, but the, I think the best part of this rig that I'm looking at... Do you think this, it's a stand? This podcast rig? No, is the uh, the the lighter that's sitting next to the mixer <laughs> so that you can light this whole rig on fire. Oh, my God. All right, so here... All right, so, so to bring this home, I guess, $750. Uh, the question I have isn't, do you think this is, is worth $750? It's probably the correct price for this gear. I don't really know. The question that I have is how much money have we spent on our rig, do you think? Because I don't know. I don't know how much the Zoom cost. I think the Zoom is like 300 bucks, something like that. All right. I know I spent for my MXL kit, which is one of the, which is both one of the full size stands that is being used and the amp stand that you use. Uh, I think I spent 80 on that. Did you buy microphones or just the stands? I bought microphones. And we're using those? We, we have one, one of the MXLs is I bought. Okay. Remember? Because I had the MXLs and the pencils. We've been doing this for three and a half years. I can't remember anymore. Yeah, I'm not. 
I'm right. not playing like, hey, Ryan, remember that one time I invested in microphones? Well, I should just, you, we have a bunch extra. I should just give you. Yeah, I'm saying if we have a, one of the 990s, I'll just take one home. Tonight yeah, totally. And no, we have we'll, plenty. We'll work towards that. Um, but um, I, I, as far as total, like, if I was going to go buy a podcasting rig from scratch, I mean, 750 would be more than enough. Right. No, I, well, you know, if we just did it from there, you're talking about, so the Zoom's 300. You get a pair of these 990s or, you buy, know. Buy them used, you can get them 50 bucks a pop. probably 50 bucks, so that's 400. A Two pair stands. Of, a pair of stands is, you could probably do like 80, I don't know, 80, say 100 bucks. We'll go a little a little generous on that. Sure. So that's 500. And the then, cables are dirt cheap. And then you need, no, you get your cables from sciencewordcables.com. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's. If you're man enough. That's $650. <laughs> I mean, it's in the right window, but yeah. I'm looking at this this podcast rig on this ad here, and just like this is, you're going to end up having to fix a lot of this, like right? Or you're just going to, you know, oh, that's that's something I was thinking about when I saw this was that this reminds me of the the guys who hang out every Friday night. Damn it, that's what we do. Not uh, every Friday night. Yeah, Steve. only every other. Uh, no, just the the idea of like guys who sit around and just like. You know, chit the chat. You know, yeah. Cut, the, cut the bacon. Cut the fat. Chew whatever. the fat. Chew you're the mix, fat. you're mixing metaphors here. Cut the cheese. I don't know. <laughs> um, and and this is like that rig. This is the guys who are there. They're not. You know what this rig is for? This is rig is for recording Adventure Zone. Yeah, I guess so. You know, it's four microphones. Who has four people on a podcast? It's a lot of people for a podcast. Um, I'm I'd say saying, that three people is too many. If you have three people in your podcast, it's time to get rid of one. And I'm talking murder. <laughs> well, that's a little... Uh, a little rough, I know, but... A little aggressive. Yeah, I uh, recommend the candlestick in the observatory, so... All right. Um, anyway, the idea being, like, this is... In a sense, like, I look at this and I go, like, like you said, like, everything might be priced out fairly. I mean, yeah. But there's kind of this question of, like, do you, like, are you ready to start a four-person podcast? Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, do you know what you're going to talk about? And I this, don't know. And this, uh, some of the stuff is mis- mismatched towards podcasting, so you're going to have to replace some of it eventually. Um. And I think that board is just going to be too cumbersome for most podcasters. Like, yeah, it's just too much. Yeah. And you look at all the table space. There's not even room for drinks right there. Oh my Where gosh. are you going to put your drink? Where are you going to put your clipboard and your, your iPad? Dude, How look are you going to take notes? How are you going to take yeah, notes? You take They're notes. probably not going to look at ads. Yeah. There's a mouse on there, which means there's a computer hiding somewhere. That's true. Which is yeah. another thing that's going to be on that table. Uh, what I was talking about, like you're recording with a computer, things are going to go wrong eventually. Right. The field recorder just works. I'm just saying. All right. Um, we got one last ad. This is from Alan Chapel. Thanks, Alan. Uh, it says, have, have a set of Pro Studio 15-inch dual concert speakers that work great and nothing is wrong with them. They throw a good bang to them. When you play rock music on them, any good rock bands from Daughtry and Nickelback and Three Doors Down and Creed Music, if you're interested in them, the first 400 bucks takes them home with them. Cash only, no checks or money orders or PayPal. So shoot me your name and number if you're interested in them, and I will give you a call as soon as possible. And I just use them to play what I set up there in the post above there. And I run regular wire from a back of an old 90s radio and huck them two wires up to the back of the radio and then just crank away with every with what every I listen to on the radio and rock music to so like I said shoot me your name and number and I'll get back to you as soon as possible so to the man with a velvet hat calls only no text message <laughs> thanks Alan <laughs> great ad this week's episode is brought to you by sinusoid.com if you're looking for the best cables on the market Sinusoid.com. Are you man enough to sinusoid? I don't think you are. Prove me wrong. We do, you need to do a whole green screen <laughs> concept around that character <laughs> where like it'll just be me and I'll just be like holding up a cable and I'll be like, I don't, I'll think, have, I, I don't think I can. I have this confused look like, huh? <laughs> and like maybe I'll put on like I'll get like a like I'll get a I'll put on my suit from the uh from the uh, 
lay the, it on me, man. The gravitas. Oh yeah. Uh, video. You're like your scientist suit. Yeah, like a full button up with like some tie. Yeah. I'll get some white white athletic tape put around the center of my glass, and I'll be like, huh, guitar cable, and then you'll just like bust in with like some uh, some sunglasses and be like, hey, bro, <laughs> you look super weak and not cool, not like me. I use sinusoid cables, the toughest cable in the world. <laughs> It makes me tough. Are you tough enough? I don't think so. Sinusoid cables. Adoptapet.com. We got we to gotta make that. We got <laughs> we to gotta find some time. <laughs> All right. This week's song is sent by Chris Reynolds. Uh, he says, my 15-year-old son recorded this for me on Father's Day. So a little addendum for me. If you don't like this song, it's because you're a dick. Whoa. I hope it's something you'd be interested in playing at the end of the podcast one week. Well, Chris, this week is that week. Uh he says his son used a Fender Mexican Stratocaster with Seymour Duncan hot rails on the bridge and a DiMarzio cruiser in the neck into a Big Muff Pie into a 50-watt P Val King based as a Squire PJ Jazz into a $150, $150, 150-watt refurbished 90s PV bass That's a dollar a watt. Yeah. Uh, drums are a cheap $300 kit he bought with his own money from busking. His 15-year-old son busks. Nice. We didn't busk until I was like, 20. Yeah, I was out of college when I started yeah. busking. Uh, everything was recorded using a $15 vocal mic into GarageBand. He wrote, performed, and recorded everything you hear. And he, Chris uh, ends this with saying, uh, he is 100 times more talented than I will ever be, <laughs> which means he's probably a thousand more times more talented than I will ever be. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Chris, thank you for sending us this track. This is actually the last track we have in our uh, fresh sends right now. Email so us. if you want to get your track on the show next time, 60CycleHumcast at gmail.com is your place to look. Thanks for listening. Bye. Later.